Hey guys, Cody with Princess Craft RV. Come along with me as we go through this Lance 1995 travel trailer. So to get you started up front, we've got your power tongue jack from LCI. This is gonna be their smart jack that's equipped with up and down features, uh, memory hitch height and auto retract, as well as a service light for doing things in the dark. So basic operation for light control, you're just gonna push the little light bulb button here and that's gonna turn your service light on and off. You can also see it has an LED battery monitor, which is gonna basically be kind of a basic monitor for your battery on your trailer. For up and down operation, you're just gonna push and hold which direction you wanna go. Up is the up button's gonna be up on the tongue. The down button is gonna be down on the tongue. For auto retract, you're gonna push the down button. One, two, three, hold on the third until it starts to retract on its own, and then it'll retract to full, extent, uh, full retraction. Uh, for hitch height, um, you're gonna, once you find your hitch height, you're gonna push and hold the up and down button for five seconds until it um, sets. And then to recall it, you're gonna push the up and down button three times to recall that auto hitch height, and it'll automatically come back up to where you need to be to load onto your tow vehicle. So pretty cool jack, um, they've been great. And if it does fail, the electric motor does fail, does have a manual crank option on it right here. You're just gonna pop this plug out and you've got a three quarter inch drive in there that you can uh, manually crank this jack with. So to get this thing hooked up to your vehicle, it's gonna ride on a two and five sixteenths inch ball. And just to get this thing to couple, once you get it load down on, uh, loaded down onto the ball, you're just gonna pick, the, pick up on the back of the slide here and let it slide forward. And these two ears just need to drop into the cavity down below. And that'll give you a good uh, solid latch. And then Lance does provide a lock pin that just slides through the coupler there for you uh, to keep the uh, coupler latched. When you get ready to un unhitch, pull that lock out, um, release some a little bit of weight off the ball with the tongue jack. And all you gotta do is pick up and pull back on that and that should release. To finish your hookup here, um, we've got your standard uh, seven way plug here, which is gonna run all your lights, turn signals, running lights, and the electric brakes um, on the trailer if your tow vehicle is equipped with a brake control. We also have a breakaway cable, which just goes into the uh, safety breakaway box for the electric brakes on the trailer. If for some reason you get detached from the tow vehicle, this is designed to yank out of the box underneath here and engage the brakes on the trailer. And last but not least, we're gonna have your safety chains that are gonna hook up to the receiver hitch on the tow vehicle. And these do need to cross and create kind of a basket underneath the hitch when they hook up to stay in compliance with state laws. And make sure that they don't drag the ground when you're in tow. Uh, so they do have some products that can keep these chains up if you do ride close to the ground when you're all hitched. Moving up from there, we're gonna have your uh, propane cover here. It's got three 20 pound cylinders in it. Uh, so if you just need to get in to turn valves on and off or change cylinders, you're just gonna pop this cover off right here that's on top. You're gonna use a key or a coin or something to turn this little um, latch right here. Just turn it, face that arrow to the uh, off door side of the trailer and that'll allow you to open this up and then to latch it back down, you're just gonna turn and that arrow is gonna point down this way. Uh, so if you need to turn your cylinders on and off, you just reach your hand back in there, choose which cylinder you need to operate and turn it on. And if you need to change uh, which cylinder is being pulled for for service, you're just gonna use this lever right here to the left or right. Uh, if it's pointing that way, it's for this cylinder. If it's pointing to the right, it's for the right cylinder. Um, and then you have a third cylinder in here that is not hooked up. Um, it is an additional cylinder that you can put into service. And to do that, um, and also to remove cylinders, we just have to remove this cover. So you've got four little buckles in each, one in each corner of this cover. And then all you've got to do is slide this thing out like a so. And that's going to give you full access to your propane cylinders in here so you can get a better idea of what's going on. Um, if you do need to remove these for uh, refilling or exchange, uh, first things first, we're going to make sure our cylinder is turned off. Disconnect our service hose. And then we can undo our wing nut that's on top here.
then you can lift your uh, regulator mount off and then that will give you access to the crossbar and allow you to extract your tank from the trailer and take it and get it refilled or exchanged, whichever works for you best, and then put it back into service. If you would like to use the extras tank that comes with it to put that one into service or remove it from the trailer, it's just got a band clamp around it. You're just gonna undo the clamp and that's gonna allow you to lift the cylinder straight off the trailer and either put it into service or go get it exchanged as well if you're not ready to, uh, you know, use it. To put it back in, just drop it right back into place. Buckle it back in to put your service cylinders in. Just fish it down into there. We just got to get your crossbar back into place here. Like that. Don't forget to put your regulator back on. And then wing nut. And this just needs to be snug. It does not need to be over tight. Uh, just all you're trying to do is keep your cylinders from falling out. And then hook your service hose back up and turn your cylinder back on. Once that's done, you are ready to start using propane again. And we just need to fit your cover back on. It just slides in. When these do sit back on, in each corner there is a little track for each piece of this to sit into. So this track right here, and just put your buckles on, latch it. And that takes care of your propane area. Moving over here to the front storage side, uh, off door side of the trailer. This top compartment right here is gonna have your uh, one of your 12 volt batteries in it. To get this thing to slide out, just pull up on this latch right here, pull that tray out, and that's gonna give you access to your battery. Uh, these are equipped from us with a uh, Group 24 wet cell standard lead acid battery from Interstate. These can be upgraded to uh, 12 volt AGMs. You can do 12 volt lithium. Uh, whatever you'd like to do if you do want to upgrade these batteries at a later time. Just below the battery, we're going to find kind of your main power station for your stabilizer jacks. Center button is going to be the power. Now, this power button is going to control all four jacks for their power. And then you have your extend and retract for the off door side with the power switch. The other two buttons are on the other side. I'll show you uh, where those are. So to use these, it's very simple. Uh, retract is gonna raise the uh, stabilizer up off the ground, like so. And you're just gonna run it all the way up until it's flush to the bottom of the trailer. When you extend it, just push the extend side and you're gonna run it to the ground, put a little pressure on it and it'll stop. If you continue to hold the button, it does have an automatic circuit breaker that's gonna trip once it overloads and uh, it will no longer operate. So if you're using your stabilizers, remember you do need to start over here because you do have to turn your power on to uh, run your jacks. So moving into your first storage compartment here, uh, it does have a couple of straps in here for securing a 2000 watt generator. Uh, fits nicely and you can secure it in here. We also have your uh, tire iron for um, removing the lug nuts off your tires if you do get, per chance, get a flat. And then also in the very top corner here, we have your battery disconnect switch. Uh, the top says off and the side over here, which you can't really see, does say on. But if this key is unremovable, your battery is connected. If you're going to disconnect it, you can turn this and then it's going to be pointing to the off and the key will off actually pull out of the disconnect switch, which is a good indicator that you are not connected. So if you want to be connected, put it in, turn it on like that. Key can't be pulled out. You have power. If you're gonna be putting the trailer in storage for any period of time, do disconnect, that's gonna extend the life of your standard lead acid batteries. Moving back just from there, we do have a storage compartment under here. 
uh, key lock and you can store kind of whatever you would like in here that'll fit. Um, it just may get some water in it, so don't store anything, you know, that uh, would be affected by water in there. So moving back just from this storage underneath the trailer, just behind that, uh, we do have a uh, dump handle. This is actually gonna be for your freshwater dump. You'll see that uh, white uh, 90 degree turn right there. That's where it's gonna dump out at. This is just for a gate valve. So it dumps really quick instead of just this little trickle uh, that a lot of freshwater tanks do whenever they drain. So that's gonna speed along the process. So let's move over to the uh, door side of the trailer real quick and then we'll kind of catch things on the back. So moving over here to the front side, um, on the door side, we have your other 12 volt battery. Again, this is the same as the other side. All the operation is the same for getting that battery in and out. Just below that, we're gonna find your other uh, stabilizer jack switches. As you can see, there's no main power switch in here. So these um, only operate if you have the main switch on the other side turned on. Operation is the same. Just forward of that, you're gonna see a Go Power portable solar kit plug um, you just plug into it with a uh, portable solar panel it's going to help recharge your batteries if you're dry camping or in storage for a small panel there and keep things kind of charged up for you just rear of that we're going to have your large uh, storage pull out storage here to get this storage out first things first we've got to remove your slide lock and then we've got to remove this latch here or i'm sorry unlatch it and that's gonna allow you to pull this storage out. Now this thing can fit a lot. You can store a lot of stuff into this. Um, and, and they've been pretty stout, been really good. Once you get that thing uh, loaded back up and you push it back in, just latch it back into place. You don't want it sliding around while you're traveling. Uh, latch here and then your track, uh, track pin there. Uh, you do have a service light in here. It's just gonna be a push on the face. There's kind of a light indentation right there where you're supposed to push. And then you also have a uh, switch right here. It's gonna run your uh, accent lighting right here on the front of the trailer, uh, which can also be used for some service lighting um, if you're up there working at night. Just above this, we do have a uh, card table stored in here. Just pulls out, legs fold down uh, like any card table would. And it just stores there. And just rear of that, underneath the trailer, we do have your uh, <clears throat> RVQ connection or a portable, for a portable propane grill to use. Uh, very easy connection. It's a quick connect with a shutoff valve. So this does have to be done in a specific operation to work. Um, and then right here, we've got your spare tire crank down. This works just like one in most cars these days or trucks that have the spare tire mounted underneath the vehicle. You're just gonna crank it up and down to lower your spare tire. All right, moving just in front of the wheels on the door side of the trailer, we have your fresh water fill. To use this, all you gotta do, open the cap up, put your water hose in there and let it fill up until the water gushes back out at you. This little black vent right here above it is the vent for the fresh water tank so you don't get any gurgling um, and it actually allows you to fill the tank a little bit quicker. Just behind that we have your furnace exhaust. Uh, it does say hot because it does get hot. This is going to be actually the furnace exhaust. So when it's burning the propane to heat your trailer, all the exhaust is going to come out here. So be cautious for hands or anything that may be placed over that. You don't want it covered whenever you're in use. Just above that's gonna be your refrigerator uh, side vent. So to get into this thing, to check it for any kind of bugs or anything like that, it does have two turn latches in the bottom corners. First things first, you've got to turn those and you want it facing up and down as so on both corners. And then all you're gonna do is pull from the bottom out until those release and then drop it down. That's gonna give you access to the lower section of the backside of the refrigerator. There's not a whole lot in here for you as a consumer, but this is more for us as professionals to do any kind of service work that are testing that we may need to if you have any fridge issues. A couple things that I do like to point out on these, uh, your 110 outlet is right here for it, for 110 operation. Um, we have seen these get knocked out. Somebody gets in here and accidentally unplugs it. And the other thing is gonna be this little turn valve right here. Let me, this little turn valve right here. You can see it's got a little hash in it, little line in it. 
that should be facing this way. If for some reason this valve gets hung open, you can manually close it with that just by turning it and the line should be running up and down. But that's about it for being in there. There's not much else for you to do in there. When you do put it back on, make sure you get it on all the way and do not forget to latch your corners. Uh, these have been known to blow off if you don't latch it. Um, moving back from that, we've got your exterior 110 outlet. Right next to that, we do have a lockable cover for a uh, 12 volt accessory port. So we've got an accessory port with two USB uh, charging stations there. Just above those, we have your um, TV mount. This is gonna be if you wanna bring your TV outside, um, you can mount it right here, get your power right here. If you're gonna use a uh, 110 TV, kind of get things going, just gives you some, you know, so you can sit outside under the awning and watch some TV. Just above that, we do have your uh, vent hood vent. Uh, to open this thing up, it does have two tabs here. All you've got to do is push up on them with your thumbs and that thing should pop open and flap as you can see like that. If you want your vent hood to work properly and actually remove those uh, cooking fumes and smoke and stuff from the trailer, this does need to be open. But I do stress to make sure that you latch it back before you hit the road. These uh, vent flaps have been known to go missing if they do not get latched while you're traveling. All, the, all you got to do to latch it, just put your hands in here, push it, you should hear it snap shut, and now it no longer flaps. Um, on your wheels and tires, two things, check your tire pressure, follow the manufacturer's recommended PSI for tire pressure, and your lug nut torque. Um, all of your lug nuts do, do need to be torqued uh, per manufacturer recommendation um, for your first trip. Uh, it's at 10, 25, and 50, and that's 200 foot-pounds. After that, we recommend going to, at least uh, before you hit the road for every trip, rechecking them, making sure that they are good to 100 foot-pounds. Moving back to your entry door. Um, so starting on your entry door, we do have your uh, grab handle here that can be swung away. You can either swing it that way or over the door. To do so, you just have to lift it up and it will drop into place. We have your uh, Global Link door handle here that has a push button lock on it. Uh, this is actually pretty cool. So you can just pre you can program in your own combo and this will allow you to unlock the deadbolt. It does not unlock the door handle. So if you're gonna go away, you're gonna lock the deadbolt, leave the handle unlocked and that'll take care of that and it'll lock it all up so you can get in and out of your trailer and you don't have to take your keys with you. So if you're going to float the river, don't want to lose those. Lock it with the electronic lock and you're good to go. Moving down from there, we have your torque lift um, Revolution Glow Step. Uh, these are pretty cool, got uh, several adjustments to them. So let's see if we can go through this and hang with me on this and we'll see if we can get through it together. Um, So to deploy them, you do have a travel pin here that's gonna go in this hole right here. So this has to be pulled first, okay? And then you're gonna lift up. It doesn't matter which side you lift up on this latch. It's this side or this side. And that's gonna allow you to pull the step out. Once you get it out, then you can, it's a scissor step, so it'll deploy down. Now your height here can be adjusted to different heights depending on where you do this. So that's gonna be the lowest setting. It's gonna be a medium setting and that's gonna be a high setting. So what that does is really allows you some versatility, you know, depending on how your trailer is gonna mesh with the ground. Other adjustments that you have are gonna be the landing gears. So these are adjustable with a push button here on the side, this little push button right here. Uh, so you can push that and then you can extend this leg, you know, quite a bit. So it's got, uh, it's got five different positions for you there for uh, leg height. And that's gonna allow you, so if you have uneven ground, you can still stabilize this step um, and keep things safe for you as you're going in and out of your trailer and you don't fall off of it. So pretty cool step that uh, is again by Torque Lift and it is a great product. Moving around to the back side of the trailer, just a couple things back here. We've got your roof access ladder. 
This is gonna give you access up to the roof. You do need to be going up there periodically to inspect your roof membrane, as well as all of the sealants or roof tapes or whatever's being used on top of the roof to make sure everything's staying watertight, you haven't damaged anything, anything like that. Just next to that, we've got your uh, six gallon water heater. Just a couple of things in here for you to keep up with. First of all, in the bottom left-hand corner, once you open it, that's gonna be your drain plug. When you're putting this thing into storage or you're not just not gonna be using it for a while, pull that drain plug out and let the water drain out of this thing so it doesn't get funky. Uh, no anode rod in a Dometic or Atwood water heater, so you don't need to worry about that. I do highly recommend keeping some of those extra plugs on hand. They are plastic um, and they have been known to get cross-threaded and then they no longer seal. So inexpensive, keep a couple with you. Um, for whenever you're doing maintenance or anything on that. Just above that's gonna be your pop-off valve uh, to relieve pressure on the system. And also to uh, you know check things, make sure you do have water in the water heater before you fire it up. It's a good, easy way to check it and um, do everything there. Other than that, there's not a whole lot here. There is a little fuse on this board, a little two amp fuse that uh, could blow if you uh, overload the circuit or get a short or something like that. So that's there if it does get blown, at least you know where it is. <clears throat> Um, other than that, you know, making sure that the burn chamber uh, stays clear of bugs. We have seen even spider webs get in here and create some ignition issues on the gas side. Little compressed air blown in there periodically, not going to hurt anything. To latch it, all you got to do is match this thing up, make sure it's straight up and down, fit it through the front, give it a little pull, and twist it over the front and fold it down, and that's how you latch it. Uh, moving up top to the back of your trailer, we just have a uh, Voyager backup camera. It's just going to be an observation camera that can be used cruising down the highway. Uh, the monitor mounts in your tow vehicle and um, give you a nice little picture of what's going on behind you if you can't see. Uh, in your bumper, so your bumper can be used um, on this for sewer hose storage. So all you got to do is remove these caps. It's just a little rubber plug. And you can fit a sewer hose in there, or if you don't want to put your sewer hose in there, put something else in there. But it's a cool little <clears throat> storage area, just a little rubber plug there. And uh, <clears throat> on this one, Lance has equipped this trailer with the uh, additional receiver hitch here. Um, Lance says no more than 130 pounds on this, and that's a uniform load. So it depends on how it's loaded, but um, you do have an extra little storage hitch there for, for something on the back. Moving around to the off-door side, rear end of the trailer, uh, we've got your exterior shower. So to get into this thing, all you gotta do is pull back on the latch right here, and that's gonna give you access. Side, we're gonna have your shower head. But you can pull out, now to use this thing, just a little lever, you're just gonna push on it, and that's gonna lock it into the on position. To release it, just push down or back on that, and that's gonna unlock it. And you've got hot and cold water knobs <clears throat> to uh, choose your water temperature. Do remember to shut these off when you are not using the outside shower. They will mix hot and cold water and you won't get full on hot water. It might for a minute and then it'll kind of be lukewarm. Always remember to shut those valves off and definitely always remember to winterize them whenever you do your winterization. Um, just next to that, we do have your satellite and park cable exterior hookups. So if you're gonna use a satellite system, uh, you're gonna hook up to this one. If you're gonna use park cable, you would hook up to the one labeled park. Now I will show you the other connections on the inside that have to be made to make that operate. Just below that, we have your 30 amp service connection. So to hook that up, you've got three prongs. One of them is an L shape. Inside on the trailer, we have three prongs. One of them is an L shape. Just match the two L shape ones up, push your cord all the way on, Give it just a slight turn that's gonna lock it on. And then we have an additional lock ring that will thread on to keep that cord secure to the trailer. Just below that, we have our two uh, water type connections. The white one is gonna be for your potable water or your city water that's gonna provide water to the trailer for use for your sinks, your toilets, your shower, all that good stuff. So to get into there, just pop the cap off. You're gonna hook a water hose up in here, preferably a potable water hose. You don't wanna just use one from Home Depot. They got funky tastes and chemicals in them. Um, and you also wanna be using a water pressure regulator uh, in line on that hose to control water pressure. The one next to that's gonna be for the black tank flush. 
The only time you're going to use this one is when you are flushing your black tank. And you probably want to use a separate hose from your freshwater hose to hook up to that. Just in case you get some kind of backwash, uh, you don't want that uh, sewer water coming in contact with your freshwater hose. Works the same way though. Hook your hose up. The only other thing is, is you do want to keep your uh, black dump valve open down here while you're using that so you don't flood the tank or burst the tank or cause any issues there. While we're down here, this is your dump station. Um, two valves, gray one on the left, black one on the right. Uh, liquid waste is going to be sink and shower. Body waste is going to be toilet alone. So to hook everything up, just take your bayonet cap off here, hook your sewer hose on. Dump your black tank. When you're done dumping the black tank, close that off and then open your gray tank and allow that to flush your hose out. And that's pretty much it. Once that's done, close all your valves and you're good to go. Just above that, you're gonna find two little uh, drain caps or, or water lines coming down. These are gonna be your low point drains for winterization or I even recommend draining water out whenever you're going into storage. You're just gonna take these little gray caps out and that's gonna be kind of the lowest point on the water lines and allow any excess water to drain out of the system just to try to keep things fresh. So a quick maintenance tip on your uh, slide system. Lanch uses a Schwintec slide system which is gonna be these side rails here versus a floor mount. Everything's in the wall here. On these uh, slide rails, it's a good idea to make sure you keep these good and clean. You want to check them periodically. Uh, there is some uh, lube that you can use on them. Now just remember the lube you don't want to use to fix an issue. So it is more of a maintenance thing. If you're having some kind of operational issue, get it checked out. Don't use lube to fix it, but it is a good idea to keep the system uh, lubed up. Uh, other than that, we do have a uh, wiper seal that goes all the way around the slide and a bulb seal. So to service these, they make a uh, kind of like a tire shine. You just spray it on, give it a little wipe, and you're good to go. What you want to do is make sure these stay lubed so they don't pop on the side of the slide and that they stay resistant to the sun because once the sun bakes them, they no longer are going to keep the water out and then you have a leak. So quick, easy maintenance stuff. Do it uh, kind of depends on how much you use it, but recommend it about every 90 days. So other seals that you'll want to check, um, anywhere where there's trim, Generally, there's going to be some type of seal, uh, whether they use a silicone or some other type of product. You just want to inspect that stuff, make sure that there's no large gaps, anything like that. Um, everything should look nice and clean, nowhere where water is going to get in. On the roof, when you do your roof inspection, if you're looking for anything that might need service, you want to look for cracks and gaps if they're using a lap sealant. If they're using roof tape, you want to make sure that it's nice and flat, that it's not peeling up on any of the edges. Now, some of that stuff does require you to get down on all fours and crawl around and kind of play with it. If it's good and tacky, leave it alone. If your lap sealant peels up real easy, it's probably a good idea to replace it. Same with the roof tape. Good clean surface, new product, should be good to go. On the side of your slide here, <clears throat> there is a storage from the uh, outside that you can access. I would squeeze in there and show you, but I can't. <laughs> but it's just access uh, with a thumb lock and a key lock there so you can store quite a bit of stuff in there. Just remember on your slides, anytime you're putting stuff for storage in them, you don't wanna just pile everything you can in there. These things do have weight limits, especially when they're running in and out. You don't wanna strain your slide system and cause any issues. I think that takes care of the outside of your 1995. Let's go check out the inside. All right guys, so coming inside your Lance 1995, first thing in, um, your screen door. Pretty cool, easy operation, it just shuts. It's got a latch right here to get it open and closed. If you want to have just your screen door, you can pull that little slide cover shut there. That's going to help keep the bugs out, allow some fresh air in and out of the trailer. When you're done using this thing and you want to stow it back to the door, just push it back to the door. It's going to latch right here onto the door and move with the door. On the inside here, on the back side of your door handle, you'll find your default pin code and um, some other things, some other instructions and some other buttons. This thing is battery operated, so might be a good idea to store an extra key somewhere that's not in the trailer. If you are using the keypad pretty regularly, I'd hate for you to get locked out because battery went dead. Also on your door, it is equipped with a uh, nightshade. To use this thing, all you gotta do is pull it down and it's gonna lock right into this little thing right here, this little receiver. So it's got two ears. All you gotta do is fish it in there and Voila. 
Just coming inside the door down at the bottom at the entry, we do have your uh, fire extinguisher. Biggest thing with this is to check it periodically and make sure it's still operational to do that. This little green button on top, just push it down, make sure it pops back up. If it does, everything should be good to go and it should be usable if necessary. Next to that, we do have a heater duct to get some heat out of. To the left of the entry door, we've got a coat closet for hanging some stuff in. We have another coat closet. A couple of pull-out drawers that have uh, soft clothes on them so they don't slam shut. You just have to get them to that point and they will close. This very bottom compartment is not for storage. This is for access to the back side of your water heater. Uh, biggest thing here is going to be your winterizing valve, uh, which is going to be this one right here. And it gives you some instructions on this yellow tag about where to put it whenever you need to do your winterizing so we can bypass the water heater and not pump six gallons of antifreeze into the water heater. That tends to be a waste. We drain it out, bypass it, and good to go. Just above uh, to the right of the entry door, we have a few controls over here. Uh, first, we have your slide out room in and out. To use this, all you have to do is push and hold which direction you need to move the slide. If you want to pull it in, push and hold until the slide comes all the way in. If you want to run it out, push and hold the out button until it runs all the way out. Now with a Schwintec slide system, it's always a good idea to run the slide full in or full out anytime you operate it. When you do short cycles on a Schwintec slide, it can over time start to create a timing issue and your slide will start operating kind of in a crooked motion instead of being straight in and out. So just remember that when you're using it. Uh, just below that, we're gonna have some light switches. Uh, the first one's labeled patio. It's actually a three-way switch in the dead middle. That's gonna be off. If you push it to the up position, that's actually gonna turn on an amber patio light. If you push it down, it's gonna turn on a clear pat or a white patio light. Next one to that says awning. So there's an LED strip in the awning. If you have your awning deployed and you wanna have some light from the awning, you just use that one. Next one says courtesy. That's gonna be the entry light right here coming inside the door on the ceiling. Now this is the pretty much the only light in the trailer that's controlled with a main switch, if you will. I'll show you how to control the rest of them, but it's just right here. They call it a courtesy light, so when you're coming in at night in the dark, you just flip that on and it gives you enough light in the trailer to where you can see around. Next, that's gonna be the uh, mood lighting, which is actually gonna be the light right over the slide. Uh, just to kind of give you some mood so you can play with the light configurations in here and set it up however you would like it. Uh, just next to that, we've got your uh, carefree awning control. Very easy operation on and off. If you've got it in the on position, so if you're going to extend it or retract it, you do have to have it in the on position. Hit which direction you want to go. You just need to push it and the awning is going to auto extend. So once it gets going, it's going to automatically extend all the way out. And once you're ready to retract it, just push the retract. It's going to automatically retract all the way in. Another cool feature that is on the Carefree awning is it equipped with a wind sensor. So if the wind starts flapping it too much, it's automatically going to retract as long as you have your main master switch for the awning turned to the on position. When you get ready to travel or you no longer want the awning out or anything like that, just flip that switch to the off position. And that's pretty easy on your awning. Just below that, we do have your uh, Jensen entertainment uh, radio slash DVD player slash Bluetooth, all that good stuff. Uh, a lot of things going on here. FM, AM radio, it does have Bluetooth so you can stream music to it as well as a uh, DVD player so you can play DVDs to your TV. And it does have a USB port for charging um, off of it as well with a headphone jack so you can play music to it that way if you kind of go uh, like an MP3 player. So moving into the kitchen area, got your kitchen faucet, uh, countertop here that does have sink covers. These just pull out. They can double as additional counter space when you're not needing to use the sink. But if you do want to use the sink, just remove them. Uh, this will swivel side to side as well as has a pull out with um, different uh, spray patterns here. So to use your faucet, all you have to do is tip that handle out away from the uh, main body. So if you tip it out this way, that's gonna give you your flow control and temperature setting is gonna be up and down. So you can see your blue and red here. So all the way down towards the countertop is gonna be cold. If you go away towards the window, 
that's going to be uh, hotter. And if you go all the way, obviously, that's full hot. Um, and then when you're done, just push that stem back to the uh, faucet itself. Just above the um, sink, we do have a spice rack up here for you to keep some stuff on. You can do whatever you'd like there. Um, and we also have an aluminum mini blind back here. The clips to the wall, if you want to keep it down for travel. This is just like a uh, home shade, little, little uh, nipple there. You're just gonna fit that into the end of the shade uh, to keep it down and into the down position. Again, do clip it in if you're gonna travel with it down. Otherwise, it's back here banging around. You're gonna end up with bent blinds, something like that going on. But if you wanna use them, you wanna pull them up, works just like a typical household mini blind. Just pull it down, lock it into place if you want to have it in the up position. To operate this window and every window in this trailer, uh, except for the fire exit, it's gonna be a crank out. So to use this, you're just gonna pull this little uh, lever out right here, and then you can rotate. You just crank it in and out, and that opens and closes the window. So a very easy operation. If you want to remove the screen for cleaning, it's these two little tabs right here. Just pull down on them, and that screen's gonna tip right out of there and give you access to the glass and you can get in there and clean. Again, they use a regular mini blind here. First of all, it's a wet area. It's also a cooking area. It could be a fire hazard and they'll end up generally stained from cooking or um, you know, whatever there. So to put this thing back in, you just gotta fit it back in here. Again, pull down on your tabs, let it push it back slightly into place and your latch back into place. All right, just above that, we do have a storage compartment. Uh, we just have storage up here, as well as a 110 outlet back there. It's going to be for your microwave only. Uh, so just remember as you're putting things in here that you, uh, that you don't, um, you know, accidentally unplug it or something like that and cause that to no longer work. A little switch up here in the uh, top left. When you open this, it's automatically going to turn the light on for this cabinet. So no switch or anything, uh, really cool feature that Lance added to that. Just automatically turns on when you open the uh, cabinet door there. So moving just below the sink, we have a GFCI outlet, has a green light on it. So that uh, is how you can determine if this outlet has power to it and that it's set to be usable. If it's tripped, light's gonna be off. Push that red button, if that green light turns back on, everything should be good to go. You may have plugged something into it that tripped or it may have just tripped due to a power surge or something like that. Uh, that outlet is also gonna control other 110 outlets in the trailer. It's always a good place to start if you're having a power issue is go back to your GFCIs, check on, make sure they're not tripped and move from there. Uh, just below that, we've got storage. So storage compartments, little slide out trays that you can store whatever you'd like in. All right, all the way underneath here, under the sink in the very back right-hand corner, we're gonna have our water pump. The other thing that we're gonna have here is another turn valve right there. And that's gonna allow you to either pull water through uh, from the freshwater tank or from this clear tube. And what that does is allow you for easy access to winterizing. So if you turn that uh, valve and it points towards this clear tube, this goes right down into your gallon of antifreeze. You turn your water pump on and it just sucks the coolant in. Uh, bypasses the water heater and goes to all of your faucets and fixtures. Don't forget the outside shower and that gets you protected uh, against freeze damage. So very easy operation um, for you there. All right, moving over to kind of our cooking area here. Up top, we've got our high point microwave. It's a uh, non-rotary style microwave. Check out your instructions on that. Other than that, it pretty much works like a regular microwave. Moving down from there, we do have your vent hood that has a uh, light in it, as well as your vent hood fan. Remember, if you're gonna use the vent fan to make sure that you have the flap open on the outside of the trailer. Uh, this uh, thin aluminum right here is a splash guard. Um, so, you know, keep it clean. Cleans up pretty easy, but it is, uh, is there. And we have seen uh, if you use oversized dishes on your cooktop, remember this stuff is designed to be smaller for RV use. If you're using something giant, we've seen too much heat accumulated here and seen issues with those splash guards. Uh, but to uh, access your cooktop, all you're gonna do is take the forward section of your glass top, flip it back, 
and then grab the rest of it and flip it the rest of the way. That's gonna pretty much almost lean against the back wall and it's supposed to do that. So to light your burners, uh, first of all, you just have to choose which burner you wanna use. You can see they're located uh, in the emblem just like they would at home. And you're just gonna turn that knob to a flame setting and you're gonna use the striker right here and you're just gonna rotate it. Once you get your flame established, push it, keep uh, holding the, uh, the knob in for about another five seconds to get that established, give things a chance to heat up and maintain that flame. Once you're done cooking, doing whatever you need to do, just turn that burner off. Now this is a glass cooktop that covers this up to give you some extra um, countertop space. Let this cool off before you close this down over it. Um, we don't want this shattering on you or anything like that. You can't close it down and use it to cook on if you have these turned on as a warmer underneath. It is solely just for cover and extra counter space. So allow everything to cool down before you close it. Um, to do your oven, it is a pilot light. So to light your pilot, it's all the way back here in the back. You're gonna have to take your knob, turn it to pilot and it says push hold. So you're gonna push and hold, use a stick lighter or a long match and you've got to put it back there to the pilot area, light it. Continue to hold that for about another five to 10 seconds until the flame is established on its own. Choose your temperature or broil and cook as you normally would. And the cool thing about a pilot is, is if you do a lot of cooking, you can leave it and just let it burn. But do remember that you have a limited amount of propane on board um, or you can relight it every time, which is what I would prefer to do. All right, uh, just on the wall here before you get to the refrigerator, we've got some switches. These two right here say galley lights. So we've got our sink lighting, which is gonna be the light specifically over the sink. As you can see there, it's a strip light that runs right here. And then we have our soffit lights, which are gonna be these two little uh, button lights right here uh, for your lighting operation for your galley area. Just above that, we do have your monitor panel. So to use this thing, we've got four buttons on the right, battery, fresh, black, and gray. These are gonna be your uh, levels for your black tank, gray tank, and fresh water tank. And you just push them and your LED will change here and tell you your level. And the other one's gonna be battery and show you your level there. Uh, the other three switches that are on board, first is gonna be our water pump. If you turn that on, pump light's gonna come on and you're gonna hear your pump run. Now, the only time you should be using that is if you're dry camping or while you're traveling down the road, you're not hooked up to city water, then you're gonna use the water pump to extract water from your onboard water tank to provide water to the trailer. Below that, we're gonna have the gas control switch for the water heater. Uh, to use that, just flip it on, the gas light's gonna come on and it's gonna go through its ignition and it's gonna do everything on its own. If it does have a failure, this DSI fault light right here will come on um, and notify you that, hey, I didn't light or there's another issue. Um, as long as it doesn't come on, everything should be normal and you should have hot water within about 15, 20 minutes. Just below that's gonna be the electric side of the water heater. So to use that, you're just gonna flip it on. Again, that electric LED light will come on to notify you that you have the electric side turned on. So if you're plugged into 110 power, Use the electric side. If you have a lot of people showering or you like longer showers, you can run both modes, but it is thermostatically controlled. So the thermostat's gonna do with it as it likes to, um, but it, you can run gas electric together. Um, just below the uh, oven, we have your WFCO power distribution panel. We've got all your 110 breakers here on the left, 12 volt fuses on the right. Lance does a pretty good job of labeling what everything goes to. As you can see, all your 110 breakers are labeled here and 12 volt fuses are labeled over here. So if you're having an issue either on the 12 volt side or the 110 side, another good place to start, check your breakers, check your fuses and see what's going on. Cool thing about this uh, WFCO panel is, is this little space right here. So this window right here on this, uh, there's little red LEDs that run right here. So if a fuse blows, the LED that corresponds to that fuse would uh, light up which you should be able to see through that panel to alert you that you have a blown fuse. And then we have your LP alarm right here. So if you get an LP gas leak, this guy's gonna go off, make a lot of noise and alert you that uh, you may have some LP gas leaking to the inside of the trailer. Moving back from there, we do have your, uh, moving back from there, we do have your refrigerator. 
Um, okay, let's start over on that. <laughs> Moving back from there, we have your refrigerator. So to get into this thing, you have little push levers right here on the side by the handle. So if you want to get into the refrigerator or freezer, just push that, slightly pull on that, and that's going to give you access. For your power controls, uh, it's a lot easier if you have both doors open. You can see them with the uh, freezer door shut, but if you've got both doors open, it's going to give you the best access to all your uh, controls here. So first and foremost, we have your on off. So you push it, all LEDs are on, that's going to be on. You can see the light's going to come on in the refrigerator section. Now we have power to our refrigerator to start doing what it needs to do. Second is going to be our mode selection. This has um, a 110 or LP gas. Uh, so if you want to choose which mode you're going to use, all you have to do is switch between the two by pushing the button. If you leave it in auto mode, it's automatically going to default to the most reliable power source. Uh, so if you're plugged into 110, it's going to automatically choose 110. As soon as you unplug, it's going to automatically switch over to LP gas, which is great if you're away from the park and the power goes out at the park. Uh, it's going to automatically switch over to LP gas. You're not going to come back to spoiled food if you're gone for you know longer than this thing will maintain temperature. Next, that's going to be our temp set. You can see here we've got three LEDs that will move along there. Uh, warmest to the left, coldest to the right. Just cycle that through. Find your temp setting that you want to use. And that's pretty much it for operation on this. Um, when you do close these up for storage, uh, when you're going to put it away, they do have these little um, kickouts right here that just snap into the uh, release. All that does is allow you to uh, latch these uh, doors open. So that way you don't get like a moisture buildup uh, and things kind of get funky in there. So that's all that's for. Just below that, we do have another furnace, uh, furnace exhaust, and we also have your furnace return air. So this is where the furnace is gonna draw in its fresh air. So don't block that thing off, especially in the winter time when you're probably gonna be using the furnace. So coming back here into the um, bedroom slash couch area, uh, just around the corner, we do have your Jensen TV. Um, to get this thing to release from the wall and swivel around where you can watch it, there's a little pull strap right here behind it. And that's going to allow you to pull and rotate this thing around so you can watch it either you know sitting over in the dinette or back here on the couch or laying in bed you can kind of position this thing just be cautious about the wires they can get hung up in the movement of the uh, mount so just pay attention when you're moving things around that you don't accidentally snag a wire and break it, break it and cause a, a power issue or something like that. So while we're back here, we do have some other controls. Um, we have a, a 110 outlet. So if you ever change this TV out to 110, you can. It's, it just plugs in right here. Or you can plug in anything else 110. Next to that, you're going to see a satellite uh, connection up here. So if you're going to run this thing on satellite, um, your your um, satellite box is going to hook in here um, or your exterior satellite can come in and then you've got your HDMI that runs out to the TV from there. Um, your 12 volt power here so the TV's 12 volt power so you can watch it while dry camping which is really cool and then next to that we just have a regular this is for your rooftop antenna as well as cable TV so if you're going to run it on Rooftop antenna, you're going to want the booster on so you can see the green light on there. That's also going to provide power to your rooftop antenna. Uh, and it's got, you can rotate this by pushing in on the thumb lock, rotate, and you can go like 180 degrees in each direction to basically find the most blue lights that you can. There is an attenuator on here so you can kind of boost the signal. More blue lights, the better the signal. Once you get that, you can turn those lights off with this on-off switch right here on the side. That just turns the lights off. That doesn't actually turn the antenna itself off. Now, if you're going to run on park cable, all you got to do, all this stays hooked up the same. All you got to do is push this button right here again that turns off that booster, and that's going to allow that cable signal to flow through the antenna booster. 
Uh, this TV's got all kinds of connections on the back. You can hook up auxiliary stuff to it if you want uh, to do different things. But once you're done using it, once you get ready to store it back into place, just fish everything around. Give it a little snug, you'll hear that click. You're locked back into place and it's ready for travel. Uh, moving over to your uh, windows. Um, all of your windows in this trailer have the same shade except for the front one on the big window and the kitchen. The rest of them are gonna be just like this MCD shade here. I'll show you how to use that. Uh, you're just gonna pull down on it. This is gonna be your day shade or your bug screen, if you will. You can pull that down, pretty much cover everything up. Now these don't snap into place, so your bugs can't still get in around them. Just keep that in mind. Uh, to get it to release, it's just a quick tug down and it's gonna suck it back up. And then we have your nightshade uh, or your darker shade here for the other one. Um, operates the same way just pull it down to where you want it slowly let it go it's going to stay there once you get ready to put it away just give it a quick tug and it's going to roll back up now to open this window it's the same as the one behind the uh, kitchen sink just cranks in and out screen removes the same way all that good stuff now the rest of your lights in this trailer other than the courtesy light coming in the door operate on a switch on the light fixture so there's a little switch right there on the side that you turn to turn these ceiling lights on and off. Moving into storage in your bedroom area. We do have a couple of places here to store stuff. Underneath on the uh, door side, we're gonna find a uh, 110 outlet, a charge station, and light switch for your um, lighting for both sides of your uh, side tables at your bed. The reading lamps overhead are just push buttons on them, the little black button, just push it, turn it on and off, however you wanna use those there. All right, so over your bedroom area, this thing does have a Dometic Fantastic fan that's remote controlled. So pretty cooperation. If you wanna open it up, just turn it on and it's gonna automatically open up. And once it gets open, it's gonna have uh, different fan speeds that you can choose. So on the control, you can see here, Starts up at 100%, goes down to 10%. And basically what that's going to do is give you that many different speed variations uh, for the fan. If you want to use this thing in auto mode, you can do it on a temperature basis. Just push your temp setting. It's going to automatically jump over to auto. And then just choose a temperature that you want to try to achieve in here. Remember, all that's going to be dependent upon outside temperature. And it's going to automatically turn the fan on and off based upon that temperature setting. So if you just want to use the uh, vent without the fan, just use the up down button on here and that's automatically going to raise the lid up and down uh, without turning the fan on. And this thing can store in a uh, cabinet or a drawer or wherever you'd like to keep it. On the off door side in the bedroom underneath the uh, cabinet here, we're going to find another 110 outlet and another charge station. Moving on to your Murphy bed. To get this thing uh, kind of laid out, first things first, you're gonna wanna remove your armrests. They just slide down in there. And then you're gonna tip this up and down like that. And then your mattress is gonna fold over this way. And boom, you have a bed. So you can store these underneath the, uh, the jackknife um, as you're opening it. These will fit right down in there and you can store them in there where they're out of the way. Uh, while we have this bed down, let me show you how to use the uh, front shade here that's over the uh, bed. So this thing does have a day night screen as well. And it also has a latch that holds the two together. All you gotta do to release that is just give it a little push at the bottom and then move your shade. And that opens that up and we have your bug screen at the bottom. So to use this window, it's gonna be uh, turn latches. So it's got turn latches all the way around it. Just open all those up and then give it a push out however much you want it. And then you just lock these knobs on the struts and that's gonna hold that window open. When you get ready to close it, uh, put your hand on it, brace the window, loosen the knob so it doesn't slam shut and then just close it back down. Now, 
These windows are equipped with kind of a vent feature. It's not a travel feature, but a vent feature. Each latch uh, receiver has a middle slot on it right here that you can put this in halfway. That's going to give you just enough to, uh, to allow that window to stay open, just enough to breathe, kind of get some fresh air in if you're using the vent. Great for if it's raining outside. Uh, it gives it enough ventilation to kind of keep things going. But if you're going to just close it, just pull it all the way shut, put all your latches back in place, close it down, and you are ready to hit the road. So to make this thing back into a couch, fold your mattress up. Pick up on the back of the couch and just kind of jackknife. As you can see, here's that storage area I was talking about for your armrests. Put that thing all the way back down. And then we can put your armrests back into place. Now these do have a receiver down in the side of the couch. They don't just slide down in there. Uh, there is a small pocket for them. So make sure you get it into there. I actually put those in backwards. Zipper should face back and so it's not exposed. That pretty much covers our bedroom area. Just one last thing. For privacy, you do have your privacy curtain here. Uh, when you want to slide this thing along, grab it up at top right by the guides. Pull it along nice and slow. Don't yank it. And that's going to give you your privacy curtain for the bedroom. When you store it, again, just push along the top of the guide all the way back to the wall and use the Velcro on the strap here to secure it back. All right, now moving to our magazine rack. At the top we do have your uh, clock. So to get that thing off the wall, you're just gonna rotate it all the way to the left, pull it straight off. On the back, it's where your battery's gonna go and how you set the clock. Once you get all that done, just put it back on the left axis and rotate it to center. Okay, just below that we have your Air Excel thermostat for your roof mounted air conditioner. So to use that, big button is going to be our mode. So off, fan low, fan high, cool, high, cool low, and cool auto low and cool auto high. And then we also have a heat operation for the furnace. The other two buttons are going to be for temperature control. So choose your mode. We recommend cool auto high. Kind of let it do its own thing um, and go from there if you're going to be running the air conditioner. For the heat, select heat, select your temperature, you're good to go. Um, on your air conditioner while we're talking about it, for vent control, you do have your two little vents that come right out the bottom here so you can get some air down here. These do rotate. Uh, you can control a small amount of air here to different directions. We have uh, airflow on both ends, so if you're at bed and you like a lot of airflow, close everything else off, open up this one on the end and get as much air as you can to the bedroom area. Uh, you can kind of choose, you know, however you want your airflow to operate here. Now, the other thing that this has is uh, filters that are right here on the sides for your return air. You do want to keep those clean. They can be serviced. They don't need to be replaced every time uh, to get them out. We're just going to pull down on these two little tabs pop this thing down, set that aside, and that's going to give us access to our filter. Now you just have to fish this thing out of here um, and try not to damage it. You know, if you have a, a pick or a small screwdriver or something, it'll allow you to fish that out of there. That's going to be your screen. There's one on each side of the lower unit here. All you got to do is rinse this out with some warm soapy water. If you keep up with it, it's going to be a lot easier to keep clean. Um, and it's also going to keep your air conditioner operating in uh, better, you know, better performance and better cooling. So to put this thing back in, now we just have to fish it back in opposite of the way we took it out. There are two little tabs in here that it's going to sit above. We just have to get it above those. And then we can put our um, lower cover back on. Fish these two ears right here into the center section. And then it's just going to snap in from there just like so. Okay, that covers our air conditioner. Just below the air conditioner thermostat, uh, we do have a 110 outlet, and then we have our magazine rack uh, that you can store stuff in. 
This little cover right here um, is actually kind of like a false cover. Your slide control module is mounted behind there. So if you're ever having any slide issues and you call for uh, over the phone for some service advice, they're probably gonna ask you, what are, are you getting any kind of codes out of your board? That's where the board's gonna be located. It's a good spot to check. And there's some lights on it that flash um, as well as some other features that it has that you can uh, do with it. So moving into our dinette area, uh, we've got a storage drawer on each side underneath the dinette bench. To get into these, you're just gonna push the little button on there, let it pop out, and that's gonna allow you to open it. Store what you need in there again. Your slides do have a maximum weight capacity. You don't wanna just load everything you can into these um, and cause slide issues. For the light control overboard, uh, you can just turn it on and off. There's a little push button right here on it, or you can use the dimmer and you can kind of set your dinner mood um, while you're eating dinner. All your windows and screens around this operate like the ones in the bedroom. The only one that's different is gonna be the fire exit window, which uses a push lever. So you just take that red lever and you pop it out of that uh, plastic piece and you push that window all the way out. That screen just yanks off and then you can climb out of that if you need to. So that pretty much covers that. But let me show you how to uh, make this into an additional bed space. Um, so to do that, first off, we've got to remove this tabletop. So just kind of jiggle it and move it around. You can see it just sits on a post right there in that cone. You set that out of the way. And then we're just going to have to remove this one. Same thing. Just give it a, a twist and it should, uh, and pull up on it should come right out. Then we're going to take your tabletop and it's going to slide right in on top of these two styles. There's one on each side. And it's going to go in just like that. Once you get it there, um, it's all about getting your cushions positioned down into the right order to uh, make your bed. So to do that, we're just gonna pull these uh, out of the side like this. They're gonna fit right down in here like that. And that's gonna make into your spare bed. So pretty easy, pretty simple, doesn't take a lot of time. And you know, you can sleep a couple of other people up here depending upon their size. So getting it back to tables, just the opposite. We're gonna take our seat backs out. Now these are curved and squared, so they are gonna be specific as to how they go. Square side's gonna be going under the window and it's gonna fit all the way back in that corner and pushes into place. As you can see, it's rounded on this side, so the round side needs to go there. Slide your tabletop back out. Put your leg back in. And put your tabletop back on top. Just like that, and you are back to being table. And that pretty much covers your dinette area. So coming back to the back end of the trailer, coming around just behind the slide here, we do have a 110 outlet. Uh, just outside the bathroom there. Moving into the bathroom. Just open it up. So coming inside here, uh, two switches. One for your vanity light, big light over, over the vanity. The other's for your ceiling light just inside the door here. Uh, so if you have them both on, it's gonna be your maximum lighting. We've got your towel bar. Uh, we have another towel hook here. And overhead, we do have your vent fan. So to use this, just crank it open. You can run it just that way, or you can turn this little fan on with a switch right here, just like so, and pull some, uh, you know, steam or whatever out of here, um, out of the bathroom. Now, Lance provides a cover that goes over all of their roof vents or skylights uh, that they call a, uh, like a Four Seasons type shade. You can see it goes here on the uh, big skylight overhead. And that's just gonna help for temperature control in the winter or summertime. You can put them in place. That's gonna help with cabin temperature inside the trailer. 
to use your toilet, it's a uh, foot flush. So halfway down is going to put water just in the bowl. All the way down is going to open the blade valve. So if you want to put water in the bowl, you're just going to push halfway. You don't want to actually open the ball and allow that bowl to fill up until it's about half full. Do your business when you're done. All the way down is going to open the ball valve and everything's going to go down into the black tank. Into your shower here. This does run on a uh, guide around the top and the bottom to kind of keep things in place. And then it's held to the wall with a magnet on this side over here. So to get in, just keep that thing slid back and it's going to give you access to your shower. Single knob for hot and cold. It just depends on where you have that lever turned as to temperature of the water. And your shower head um, has your flow control built into it here. And so all the way to the left is off, all the way to the right is on, or you can kind of set it into the middle and get a lower flow. Uh, remember, you do have a limited amount of hot water. That's why you have flow control for your shower. Moving over to your vanity sink, uh, back and forth, or up and down, excuse me, is gonna be for flow control. Left, right is gonna be temperature control. Left is hot, right is cold. And moving underneath, where you're gonna find um, your toilet paper holder in the back side of the cabinet here. And we're also gonna find a P-trap in the back side of your outside shower that has some shutoff valves to it. Uh, really great to be using those when you're winterizing. Also, if for some reason you forget to winterize your outside shower or it cracks and leaks, you can turn those valves off and still use the trailer without it constantly leaking water out there. So just outside the bathroom, we do have this uh, skylight that has a shade on it. You're just going to pull it over. That's going to close it off like that. That's just going to be a light dimming shade. Uh, you know, for nighttime, if you're parked in a campground that maybe has a light that's a little too bright, you can just close that off. Um, just pull it back and forth. It does have a string that keeps the tension on it, so be cautious not to uh, yank on that string or anything like that and stretch it out. We also have a smoke alarm in this trailer uh, mounted just above the slide here. It's a 9 volt smoke alarm. Check it periodically, test it, replace the 9 volt battery as necessary. I think that gets everything taken care of in your Lance 1995 travel trailer. But if I've missed anything, don't hesitate to give Princess Craft a call. And again, I am Cody with Princess Craft. Thank you and have a good day.